Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to another day of the Skilling Open 2020 online tournament organized by Chess24.com platform and today I would like to show you the game between Hikaru Nakamura who's gonna play as white and his opponent who of course gonna play as black Liam Kwang Gle. I hope I don't butcher this name so badly. Uh, Liam is actually from Vietnam and in this game he's gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's see what happened in this very interesting and thrilling game. So we have c4 by Hikaru Nakamura, knight f6, knight c3, e5, so a standard line of the English opening. Um, and now this is actually Sicilian defense reversed, so white have one extra tempo. Uh, it's king's English variation, two knights, but now after knight f3, knight c6, we have uh, four knights variation. Uh, g3, we have d5, exchanging in the center, so pretty much it's going like the like the Sicilian, we have bishop g2 and now of course not exchanging them the knights because white would have very powerful protection for the for the d4 like in the Sicilian uh, now white would love to play d4 in the right moment if it's possible uh, but the main line here is actually knight b6 uh, we have also castle bishop e7 we have a3 preparing b4 and then b5 this is pretty standard in this opening we have castle b4 uh, and now actually interesting that Hikaru Nakamura Mura played that position as black couple of times because in 2019 for example after he played bishop e6 we had rook b1 against Ding Liren uh, and then after f6 strengthening this pawn weakening a bit this diagonal but with the with the light square bishop why not uh, then we had b5 the, the knight jumps to d4 and then after e3 exchanging uh, he also played that against Daniel Dubov this year in the online tournament uh, and at that time he played queen c8 another option is actually uh, rook b8 rook b8 uh, both of the moves of of course uh, defend b7 as it's attacked by the bishop so these are the main ideas However, Liam have another idea. Rook e8, he makes the space for the bishop, so bishop wants to go to b8, and also the rook gonna support the, the march of the pawn. So we have d3, now taking under control e4, bishop f8 as planned, uh, and now rook e8. Uh, we also have a5, now challenging that pawn, and as b5 is the, is the main move here anyway, so we have b5. Uh, the knight is under attack, so we have knight d4, and now we have one game in the database where actually white won, um, so after e3, this knight is uh, pretty much inconvenient over there, uh, we had knight f3, bishop f3, then rook b8 with the very, very similar structure, so um, nothing fancy here, however, here Hikaru Nakamura went for the novelty, knight d2. Now, knight d2 is a pretty sneaky idea. First of all, avoiding exchange of the knights, uh, and then e3, of course, is coming. At the same time, the bishop already uh, controls b7, so this bishop cannot be moved. First, the rook have to have to control, but there is another trick, because after a4, uh, yes, this pawn is actually isolate, isolated, but this pawn as well. So the rook cannot go to b8, because this pawn gonna be lost. Uh, so we have rook b8, giving the protection to them to the pawn over protecting and now we have rook a7 as i said this rook has to control a4 and at the same time b7 so very ugly position for the rook so far we have e3 as planned so the the knight jumps to the e6 uh, and now we have knight f3 uh, but liam want to exchange these knights as he knows the structures and we have knight g5 uh, we have uh, knight g5 so hikaru agrees queen g5 and now now bishop b2 developing um, the pieces and now this pawn is a target. We have bishop e6 getting to this diagonal and maybe uh, also preparing f6 which would be very very natural. Uh, however after knight e4 the queen is under attack so queen goes back to d8 and now after f4 uh, challenging the pawn uh, here Liam went for very risky f5. Uh, and it's very risky. What he should play is probably e takes on f4, g takes on f4, uh, and then 
maybe bishop e2 and after rook a1 bishop b3 and um, the queen would have to go somewhere probably g4 and maybe put some pressure uh, on the on the g7 then maybe come with the with the knight to do to the f6 there are a couple of ideas here so uh, that of course would be possible but we have f5 very aggressive um, and this actually is uh, is not really great move and here hikaru actually starts to uh, get a really nice position knight g5 uh, we have bishop a2 so uh, also liam knows that idea here rook a1 bishop b3 uh, and now queen h5 threatening the checkmate on h6 so we have h6 knight is under attack so knight f3 and now only now e takes on f4 we have g takes on f4 opening even more um, lines here for the attack on the position of the king uh, and now we have rook a5 we have knight d4 now um, attacking this this bishop very important defender of this diagonal so bishop f7 kicking the queen and here what would happen if the pawn is taken can the pawn be taken actually can however white also have to calculate very risky like c5 and um, already attacking your uh, your knight in the center uh, and you cannot take and pass out look at this there are two pawns x-ray by the rook but both of them gonna disappear and black gonna uh, gonna win in here of course white have some moves like bishop c3 first um, and then the the rook have to, to go back then knight f3 and everything is fine with that position however you know uh hikaru nakamura didn't want such a complications win the pawn uh he says okay i'm gonna win that pawn anyway so we have queen h3 now this pawn is actually attacked twice um, and now we have knight d5 uh, we have also a queen g3 now uh, taking the pawn would be uh, would be disaster this is losing now it's losing uh queen g5 then knight e3 this is the problem with the tempo on the on the queen queen h3 then you have bishop c5 the bishop goes on this diagonal and it's all, all lost okay for example rook e3 now bishop d4 bishop d4 queen d4 uh, and after rook e1 yes the rook is defended twice however uh rook b5 and this rook gonna gonna come to b3 and uh, white uh, still have this rook pinned so very difficult position maybe move the king uh but then black of course can exchange the pieces win that pawn and uh, then yeah this is on the dark square very difficult to defend uh if playing something like bishop e4 it doesn't really matter uh, that cutting the rook from this attack on the on the rook because still we have rook b3 now this pawn gonna be lost and so on so um this would be terrible mistake actually to take that pawn uh, this is why now we have queen g3 as i said uh, already preparing uh, some shady action on the g7 so black have to be very careful this bishop as you see is a very very uh, important defender of the position uh, but we have queen f6 so liam want to you know uh, just play against this bishop because the bishop is um, undefended and now it was very very important to actually defend the bishop uh, and then move the knight the point is um, that for example rook a to a8 and then knight f2 Three and the queen have to go somewhere so queen d6 uh, and then knight e5 this knight get the very nice outpost and the position of white is still really really great so as you already see white have a really nice advantage his positional advantage uh, and the tone of initiative really nice position to play however hikaru went for rook a to c1 and now what is the difference the difference is that the bishop is undefended so we have rook b8 sacrificing the exchange and now is the race who calculates more precisely you can actually uh, pause the video and try to calculate what to play now as white it's a very very interesting the best move in the position hikaru went for knight b5 of course and uh, so the bishop is under attack we have queen b2 uh, and now bishop d5 so the knight cannot you for example attack e3 there are some tricks especially with the queen uh watching at c1 so this rook is not really the defender of this pawn uh so this is why we have bishop d5 and now this is the last moment where hikaru actually can save the game 
Uh, rook b1, believe me or not, rook b1. This is the move what Hikaru had to play. And after queen c2, there is still a lot of complications. For example, rook b2 c1 uh, and threefold repetition. Or queen d3, knight c7, going after the bishop, after the rook, so rook d8, uh, and so on. Okay? This is pretty much playable and couple of variations. Um, the engine says, okay, this is quite equal. It's still playable for both of the sides. However, we have knight c7 immediately. Now, what is the difference? What is the difference? Uh, Hikaru actually miscalculate here. And this is the time where you can pause the video and find the winning continuation for black. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So this is really, really strong move. Hikaru probably calculated, okay, uh, rook d8, he has to defend the bishop because, you know, bishop is under attack, the exchange is under attack. So after knight d5, rook d5, queen g6, I still have um, superior position. This queen gonna, for example, deliver some, uh, some fork, so black have to be very careful. Rook c8 is also coming, very dangerous pin on the, on the bishop and so on. So white would have completely dominating position uh, also a couple of pieces are under attack let's say a five if the rook is moved from there and and so on however we have boom rook e3 and this is the move we are looking for now look at this you cannot take it with the queen because there is the checkmate hanging on g2 we also cannot take with the rook because this knight is hanging now. So if the rook is taken, we're gonna have a double attack. Uh, then here is the real problem. So for example, queen e1, connect the major pieces. Uh, but after queen c7, black has two pairs and they are superior uh, to the rook. Uh, especially there are some attacks on the position of the king, for example, on these diagonals. So um, this attack would be just deadly. So rook e3, this was the shocking move for Hikaru Nakamura uh, but of course he tries to play so we have knight d5 now attacking um, the rook now we have rook g3 with check which coming with the check h takes on g3 queen d4 and at the end um, the knight can come to e3 but it's not enough because this bishop is actually attacking a3 now this pawn is lost and black gonna have very powerful pair of pawns uh, first of course white have to try to uh, bring the pieces to the game so we have rook c4 and now not taking the pawn but rather protecting this pair of pawns this pair of pawns gonna win the game so we have king f2 now b5 uh, with tempo rook c2 now b4 this pawn is extremely extremely fast we have rook a1 we have b3 and now white doesn't have much choice here uh, but have to exchange give up the exchange uh, for the pawn so rook a3 b takes on c2 uh, knight c2 and now queen b5 already threatening some uh, some double attacks pretty much um, winning already king e2 uh, now we have queen c5 uh, attacking the the knight so we have rook a2 defending uh, and now queen d5 centralizing position of the queen already threatening some queen g2 winning the pawn um, and so on uh, but hikaru of course have the chance to take the pawn dangerous pawn uh, and now we have queen g2 so converting these two powerful pawns for another passed pawn which gonna win the game we have king d1 queen g2 we have king d2 and after h5 hikaru nakamura resign he cannot stop this pawn even if he creates some kind of fortress uh, to defend all of these pieces somehow, uh, then this pawn is uh, simply gonna win the game. So this is why Hikaru Nakamura resigned. So quite a shocking move, Hikaru Nakamura actually missed this thunder move. And, um, and yeah, that's how that happened. And if you like this video, press like if for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you do want to see more games from a Skilling Open 2020, press subscribe, smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one